Yeah. Hello, Daniel. Welcome to uh, a TV Lee. Hello, Lee. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And so um, uh, why, you know, day by day, know more and more about you. And I was really wondering how you can be so productive and you practice so many, you know, sports, uh, include the Kung Fu and you do a lot of activities. You're playing basketball and uh, you also you teach both uh, uh, English and uh, Japanese and you joined many different uh, competition uh, in martial arts. How you can be so productive? How you manage your time? All right, well, thanks for that question. Uh, well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, that's a very good question because I don't know if I can explain exactly how. I mean, uh, it, for me, it's like, uh, uh, you know, uh, this may sound a little bit cliche, you know, because uh, it's something from a movie. But, you know, that that scene from uh, one of Jackie Chan's movie that he explains to uh, from the from Jackie Chan's version of the Karate Kid. He explains to uh, to the, the young boy uh, that, uh, you know, everything is Kung Fu. And so mm -hmm. I, I guess that that's a little bit of my mentality that everything is Kung Fu. So I, 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 I see I try to see everything that I have to do as an opportunity to do something well so uh, doing so so for example uh teaching uh teaching english uh teaching japanese uh doing sports do every, every kind of activity i always try to uh see this as as, as an opportunity to uh improve myself so it's like a, a mentality of of constant practice you know try try to make everything uh in my life uh, uh, an opportunity to improve. So it's a, it's a it's more a question of attitude, I guess, than uh, than of of, of uh, techniques or or strict programming for me. So I do I do try to man uh, to use a little bit of time managing techniques, but I don't use a lot of them. Uh, mainly, something that I, I I like to do is I I, I use a lot of notebooks. So I always, uh, I always notice that writing things down is very good for me. So I am a person that has actually uh, ADHD. So I have more difficulty uh, concentrating uh, naturally than most people would. So ever since I was a child, I had to deal with that. And, you know, I, I had to take medicine. So besides my, my physical disability, I also had this, uh, this problem, this learning disability with ADHD. So I always had to try to do something about it. So I had to find uh, ways to, to keep myself focused. And one of the best ways that I found for myself is, is writing things down, just keeping track of things that are important because it's, it it's really easy for someone with ADHD to forget things and lose focus. And uh, writing, uh, pra practicing writing uh, is something that really helped me a lot with that. So. I guess if I had a, a one tip or one suggestion that I would give to anyone who struggles with uh, keeping focus and managing time, write things down. I mean, I don't have a, like a specific uh, uh, orientation because I think it, it's something that's uh, very different for, for each person. So, so things that might not work for me, that, that work for me might not work for other people, but generally... And, and I think the good thing about, uh, uh, you know, society we live in now is that there's a, it's very easy to find things on the Internet. So if you go on the Internet and you look up, you know, uh, time managing techniques and, and things like that, it's very likely that you will find something that works for you individually. But, yeah, my, my recommendation would be uh, keeping a journal, keeping a notebook, uh, that's something that really helps me with my focus. Wow, thank you so much. And uh, I didn't know yet that you have like uh, the, the problem of, of concentrating, right? So, mm -hmm. but even you have the problem, I mean, of concentrating in mind and also at the same time you have uh, the physical disability, but you achieve so many things which uh, 
many people are admiring. For example, me, I play basketball. I do a lot of, uh, I play basketball for about 20 years. I, I did, uh, but I, I learned uh, different languages, but, but so far I just can speak Chinese, which is my mother tongue and English. I, I learned a little bit of the other, but just a tiny bit, like a Korean, Russian, Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I, tra <clears throat> I traveled to the country for teaching and for, um, for you know, for different um, purpose. So before I traveled and uh, had, had my teaching journey over there, I learned a little bit of language, try to understand their culture and everything a little bit more. And right. uh, as you mentioned uh, very clearly that uh, Jackie Chan, in Jackie Chan movie, you know, he said everything about Kung Fu. Indeed, mm -hmm. indeed. Uh, a, a few months ago, I wrote uh, uh, a little paper which is about uh, what is Kung Fu. Kung Fu is about the time. Kung Fu is time. So, right. right? So you mm -hmm. like, um, yeah, we have something really in common and the same um, alike uh, understanding of Kung Fu. And even in Chinese language, Kung Fu actually is, uh, you know, everybody can have their own Kung Fu. Kung Fu means is a specific uh, skills. And of course, in martial arts, it's like, uh, it's like, you know, like a nickname of martial arts, you know. So, right. yeah. And another question is, that I, I believe that your story will inspire a lot of people. You know, many people, I, I, I think, especially for the kids. You know, when I was uh, a, a child, sometimes for me, it's hard to concentrate too. Mm -hmm. You know, when I was in the classroom, I listened up the teachers, uh, uh, like um, mm, mm, torturing or teaching, maybe I, I was thinking the other something else. So I, I feel I felt ashamed. I felt ashamed, and I felt that my problem of uh, learning things not as quickly as I supposed. I thought it, it was my problem, but, but you know, yeah. yeah. So many people happened, and and. <clears throat> So another question is, how do you think and or what this, what is your experience as a person with a disability to practice Kung Fu or to do sports? So, I mean, more specifically, what kind of experience you had, what the society or the, the other people who are so-called normal people, you know, mm -hmm. should do more to no matter help or to, to like to build a community with, you know, with no matter, everybody has, uh, you know, a disability, I believe. I have a disability too. Mm -hmm. I broke my arm, you know, when I played basketball, you know, when I was a teenager. So now my arm couldn't, you know, really work very well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as you're, uh, based on your experience. Yeah, it's true. Uh, there are very, there are uh, various kinds of disabilities, you know, very uh, different kinds of disabilities. So there are visible disabilities like mine that you can tell, you know, <laughs> looking from a mile away, you can know that I'm disabled. But there are other disabilities that are not uh, visible. So something that you mentioned, like, for example, a person who who might have broken their arm. And, you know, they, they, they recovered and, and they look fine from, uh, you know, other people's perspective. But uh, maybe that experience of having their arm broken was something that changed uh, the way that they can use that arm. And so it's uh, technically now it's a disability. It might, it might not be permanent. So, for example, if the arm is broke, while the arm is broken, that's not a permanent disability, but it could uh, become a permanent disability, you know, uh, in a milder form later. So, yeah. And, uh, the way that society, so you, you also asked, uh, about, you know, my experience mm -hmm. as a disabled person and how 
I dealt with that and how I think that society exactly. can improve in, mm -hmm. in, in treating disabled people, right? How you so, can, like, uh, uh, how can I say? You achieved so many things that which maybe the so-called normal people or, you know, couldn't uh, imagine or couldn't achieve, you know? How you, uh, as you mentioned, you uh, adapt it so well, I mean, and uh, did you have some difficulty to to deal with, uh, no matter from the other people, maybe pride and prejudice, or from mm -hmm. you know this society is not so proper, maybe rules or or or, 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 or behaviors, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, well, so. That's very. That's a very good question. Let me let me take a moment here. So yeah, I I don't know uh, if I can give like any specific examples of of prejudice uh, or anything like that. Generally, my experience has been very good. I mean, I've been I've been lucky. I guess I've been blessed. Uh, however, you want to look at it. Uh, that. I've always had very uh, uh, supportive people in my life, you know, uh, both family, friends, and, you know, just people that I came across, you know, uh, through life. I've, mm -hmm. I've been lucky that I've always met a lot of supportive people. Uh, and so I haven't ha had any, you know, traumatic experience of prejudice. Mm -hmm. But there's always, but there's always, you know, uh, uh, things that are inherent to uh, to society, and it's not about uh, and it's not about uh, this person or that person's individual prejudice. You know, uh, it's just the 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 idea. I, I guess it's it's sort of that idea that people have always had about people with disabilities that uh, uh, they are uh, a burden. You know that uh, that society has to take care of them. And so mm -hmm. to a certain extent, even though, you know, pe most people would say, oh, no, that, of course, we, we will take care of, of people with disabilities and things like that. But, uh, yeah, there's there's always just that assumption, one, that uh, that people with disabilities are a burden and mm -hmm. that they can't take care of themselves. So we have to take care of them for mm -hmm. them. And actually, I just remembered something right now. Uh, when I was uh, still able to walk, when I was walking mm -hmm. with a cane, uh, I actually, uh, at the company I was working, uh, they, we, we, we took the bus. There, there was a bus system that was uh, inside the company. You know, the company had hired a, a bus company to take the employees to and from work. And... Uh, uh, Sometimes when I would get off the bus, uh, sometimes I would trip and fall, you know, and, you know, the guy with the cane tripping and falling. And, uh, you know, people would, were always uh, uh, very helpful, uh, always ready to help. But there was mm -hmm. one time and I didn't I, I didn't know this. I actually heard about it from from a friend later that mm -hmm. uh, I think one guy uh, wanted to help me. But then I, I, I said, no, no, no need. No, I, I, I can you know, I can get up. It's no problem. And I didn't, uh, at least at the time, I didn't feel like I had uh, been, you know, rude or anything like that. I, I felt that I had said it in a very nice tone. But mm -hmm. apparently, the, <laughs> the guy got offended that I mm -hmm. refused that I refused his help, you know, and then mm -hmm. he was, he ended up, you know, talking to other people and say, Oh, that guy with the cane, he's, you know, he's very angry. Don't try to help him because he's going to get angry if you try to help him. And that, so this, so this story, I, I later, I, I later heard it from a friend of mine who heard this guy talking. And then that's how I, I knew that this had happened. So I guess that's one uh, incident that, um, but you see, I, I didn't even uh, become aware of it at the time. I only heard of it later. So very, mm -hmm. uh, very rare, you know, for, for any, a specific uh, situation like that, mm -hmm. but I guess uh, from what what I I guess what I would take away from from that situation would be that uh, you know he assumed that I needed help and that uh, he assumed one that I needed help and two that he knew how to help me and actually he didn't because 
sometimes actually people try to help you know, people who, who, who walk with canes or who have some other kind of disability that they, they can walk, but they don't walk, you know, perfectly or normally or whatever. And, and, and then those kinds of people, uh, if, if they fall or anything like that, they usually have a specific way that they can, uh, uh, that they need to, uh, like some sort of specific procedure for how to get back up and things like that. So, uh, if, if he had instead of trying to help without asking if he had mm -hmm. asked if there if there was anything that uh that he could do to help then mm -hmm. then maybe that that situation could have gone differently so uh you mean he should have uh, asked her before he right uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. yeah so uh i guess that's that's uh that's something that we can take away from that it uh Asking, asking before helping is very important. Uh, people with di different disabilities will have different needs, and sometimes mm -hmm. they they won't need any help. Sometimes mm -hmm. they 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 can, you know, take care of themselves. So asking is very important. Asking what kind of uh, of help you can offer, if any, I think that's something that's very important. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your personal experience it's really real and touching for that uh, it happened on me too and uh, actually um, my grandpa is uh, uh, like uh, alzheimer's uh, patient uh -huh. mm -hmm. so you, you know of course uh, for the family you know it's not a burden you know Mm -hmm. But um, in a sort of way, you know, I mean, from maybe from uh, the people outside of the family, you know, they know that you have a, 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 a family member who is uh, in this disability, and maybe they think it's a burden. But uh, where, um, but you mentioned it's very, very specific and very. Uh, like let's say true the situation happening right now and uh, the it based on your perspective to see the situation firstly is uh, are people with disability a burden for the society or no of course mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. for you the energy you transfer to me right now after your story. And uh, I 100% sure that uh, the inspiration when you practice the Kung Fu, when you join the competition, you should to all the visitors or your friends, you know, the strangers, even whatever, mm -hmm. you give them so many inspiration and you empower them. Mm -hmm. Of course, maybe, you know, when you go somewhere, you know, you know, like when the people give you back the, the energy you transfer to them in a sort of way, but uh, by their own way to a sort of way of we call it helping hand, you know, it's like a perfect uh, circle, you know, like in a great harmony, like yin and yang, right? Right. And, uh, and also, as you mentioned, asking before helping. If, right. of course, if it's an emergency, maybe, you know, you should uh, directly yeah, that, yeah, that's... <laughs> without uh, uh, asking. But uh, normally, it's, we should ask before act. And it, yeah, and exactly. Exactly. Very much exactly. For, giving, I... yeah, for giving me this uh, opinion or experience example. You know, now, Day by day, China is getting into the we call the elder society. So more and more people, you know, we think that uh, on the bus or on the subway, we think maybe they need help. So sometimes, you know, they give me the answer which you shared. No, no, I don't need help. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm still strong. <laughs> so yeah. So and it's it's really. 
sometimes I think, uh, you know, as uh, you know, maybe I had the <clears throat> pride and prejudice. I said, ah, you you should sit, you know, not stand. But you know, it's like mm -hmm. uh, when I some people would like to I carry my luggage or I carry something heavy. My friend and my students would like to help me. And actually, for me, it's a good training for kung fu, for my for my right. strength. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, and um, thank you again for your great uh, story. And um, okay, so as you are a teacher of um, both English and uh, Japanese, how do you think the connection or the similarity or difference between you know martial arts? as a sort of body language and uh, you know the language which is somehow like a man language you know so what right. is your experience and uh, and um, and you now you are teaching a lot i see that uh, so yeah how you manage it right that that that's an excellent question thank you very much for that question i love that question uh, that's not something that we usually get to talk very much about but uh yeah, well, the thing is, well, I've uh, always been exposed to uh, different languages. My my dad uh, spoke English, and uh, I grew up. My dad speaks English. <laughs> my dad, thank God, my dad is still alive. Uh, he speaks English, and I grew up speaking English with my dad and Portuguese with my mom. So from a very early age, I had been exposed to different languages, and I grew up. Uh, uh, with exposure to not just English, but other languages, because my dad worked as a pilot. So he was always traveling around the world. So because of that, I had always had uh, interest in, in different countries and different cultures. But uh, the but then uh, when uh, so then l later I grew uh, after I, I grew up some more, I, I became interested in martial arts and things like that. And then I practiced that for a while. And then when I couldn't walk anymore, and when that happened, I still didn't know that it was, you know, possible to do uh, adapted martial arts or anything like that. I didn't know about uh, anything like that at the time. So what I did instead is I, I, I turned to books. You know, I turned to the, uh, the, the intellectual side of uh, the intellectual and cultural and spiritual side of martial arts. So I, I, I just enjoyed reading everything about that. And, uh, you know, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't speak very good Chinese. I'm not fluent in Chinese, but I do have some familiarity with written Chinese. My Japanese is much better than my Chinese, but I, I do know a little bit of written Chinese. And uh, so I, I always, I said, well, I can't do the physical stuff anymore. At least at that time, I couldn't. So I, I turned to the, the, the historical, the cultural, the artistic, you know the 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 spiritual the intellectual side of of that and i started devouring books i started reading books and and watching documentaries and things like that and so i that's how i made that connection you know between kung fu and and uh language learnings and and i noticed that you know the uh the people who who developed you know the 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 most the greatest mastery of you, you know the the western students that uh, uh, develop the, the greatest mastery of, of their particular martial arts. Generally, they ended up learning the language of the, of the country from which the martial art came from. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Kung Fu students who achieved very high levels and went to China and things like that usually ended up learning and speaking very good Chinese and, and karate students uh, generally uh, developed very good Japanese and Okinawan language skills and things like that so i think there is a a connection there and i i'm i'm glad you brought that up i think that's a very interesting subject that should be talked about more mm -hmm. so you practice uh, like uh, japanese uh, uh, martial arts the style of japan no 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 i i i wanted to the first the first martial arts that i wanted to practice was karate but i ended up uh, I ended up uh, not practicing that. I ended up practicing Kung Fu instead. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I, I, I did study some Chinese. My mm -hmm. Chinese is not, is not as good as my, my Japanese, but mm -hmm. I, I have some familiarity with written Chinese. Mm -hmm. 
and it's it's and 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 speaking Japanese makes it easier, you know, to yeah, ident- identify some things in in written Chinese. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, in 2018, I traveled and uh, had some kung fu teaching in Sao Paulo too. And Sao Paulo is used to be the biggest uh, community where Japanese live, right? But right. Later, yes. Chinese uh, are getting more and more, and the Chinese community getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. Yeah. So, so when I when I was younger, I wanted to to study to study Chinese at a at a Chinese school, but there weren't uh, there weren't any around at the time. It was very rare to find. Yeah. But it was pretty. But it was pretty easy to find a Japanese school because yeah. you know there are so many yeah. Japanese people in Brazil. So it's easier. It was. It, it still is easier. You know. But it was even yeah. nowadays. If you want, you can find Chinese uh, Chinese mm. schools in in the mm. São Paulo area. Yeah. But back then, it was much harder. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, thank you for sharing about uh, this, the connection between uh, martial arts and uh, languages. Uh, I do uh, totally agree with you about um, the great uh, martial artist uh, in a sort of uh, style who, who are in. probably tried or at least is trying no matter in speaking or in reading, writing, you know, listening, the uh, martial arts style original from. Like um, many of my students um, from uh, all across of the world uh, who practiced uh, who are practicing Chinese Kung Fu, they are learning Chinese. Mm-hmm. Even some of them, I believe they speak uh, better Chinese than me. <laughs> really? Well, Sometimes I feel they are, them, they are more Chinese than me. They eat Chinese food. They, they, they use Chinese cal- calligraphy to write. Now, I, I write it's just for, my, for fun, for practicing the calligraphy. But I don't really like um, uh, use it often as my daily life anymore. I used to practice uh, with my dad when I was a little boy, but now most mm-hmm. of the working are uh, on computer. So less and less people, even in China, uh, can really write very well in calligraphy. So this is a problem happening in China now. But the government, the government are working very hard. The government is working very hard to to take uh, the traditional Chinese culture seriously and mm-hmm. to like how can I say to recover, to rebuilding the mm-hmm. um, the glory and for the traditional Chinese culture. This is pretty good, I believe. Not only, I mean, what China is doing for rebuilding the glory of Chinese culture, I believe many countries, they are doing something quite similar. And they realize, as we said, like, uh, in Chinese, we say, like, uh, which means, like, uh, something like the gene in your blood is the gene for human being, right? Mm-hmm. So the gene in your nationality is the gene for this so whole society, for this world. So um, so I, that's why I try to practice uh, more and more about, uh, you know, the calligraphy stuff. Um, so they, they did a lot. Huh? researching and uh, some of them they are better buddhism philosophy researcher than me and we are going to have another guest from czech republic he practiced the kung fu very well and he used to learn a lot of buddhism uh, philosophy and uh, yeah and uh, i believe that later by later as you mentioned that you are more and more in Chinese Kung Fu and you you will naturally 
and of course, and you will um, get more and more culture and uh, um, experience, and you get a more like a traditional wisdom from uh, uh, from China. Kung Fu is like uh, um, a sort of way to express the culture or the philosophy behind, right? So, yeah. and uh, another question is uh, like, uh, we, now which style you are practicing? And uh, you joined in some competition. So, uh, I mean, how you can join? I mean, there is a society. I mean, there is a community or federation or association who is organizing. Yes. And all, yes. you know, you know, it's an official organization or not yet. I believe, you know, in Olympic game, you know, they have official like uh, the organization for Olympic game and also for the people who have uh, who is uh, a disability in Olympic game. Yeah, right. So uh, the first part of your question about style. So what I'm focusing on right now. So uh, uh, I, I, I talked about this the last time uh, we talked and I told you a bit about my story. I started with uh, Choi Lei Fat Kung Fu. Choi Lei Fat. Uh, mm -hmm. I know Choi Lei Fat is quite popular in Latin America, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I, I that, really that, traveled that, over there. I didn't know. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> after the traveling, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think I think that's mostly because of uh, the work of uh, Wang Datmao. Uh, he's uh, he he's uh, uh, a Charlie Fat master from uh, San Francisco, and mm -hmm. he opened a lot of of uh, Charlie Fat schools in Brazil and probably I I don't know much about the rest of of Latin America, but probably there too, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started. So I started with Charlie Fat. But when when I started, I uh, back then I was able to walk. So the 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 trolley foot that I did was not wheelchair was not for the for the wheelchair. It was mm -hmm. just you know regular regular trolley foot. Then uh, after I I I uh, had to go to the wheelchair. Uh, th then I started practicing uh, tai chi because you know tai chi had more associations with you know uh, like. It, it was seen as more sort of like physiotherapy. So it sort of made sense. Mm -hmm. You know, it sort of made sense that wheelchair, that wheelchair user and Tai Chi, that it's, you know, sort of a physiotherapy and things like that. And so, so that's, uh, that's why I ended up practicing Tai Chi. But then, you know, recently, uh, the uh, Sao Paulo Federation, Sao Paulo Kung Fu Federation, which, mm -hmm. by the way, if you, if you want to uh, look it up on Facebook, it's mm -hmm. uh, FPKF. Federação mm -hmm. Paulista de Kung Fu, FPKF, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so they approached me. the The president approached me, and he invited me to become uh, one of the directors uh, to help develop, you know, uh, uh, adapted wushu in in the state. And so, uh, so right now, I'm trying to uh, the same thing that I did with uh, with Tai Chi, uh, adapting it for the wheelchair. I, uh, I'm trying to adapt Charlie Fat for the wheelchair to create sort of uh, wheelchair forms mm -hmm. for Charlie Fat based on, you know, the, the original forms. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. And uh, uh, yeah, another thing that I, that I want to do is to sort of uh, develop a, a document to help, uh, uh, to help orient, you know, Kung Fu teachers mm -hmm. in how to... Uh, how to adapt their style for for uh, for uh, wheelchair specifically, but then also for other disabilities generally. So that's mm -hmm. something that I'm actually uh, going to be working. Try, I, I want to. I, I intend to work with my uh, my old Tai Chi teacher because you know I he has a lot of, since he was the one who developed uh, uh, adapted um, the the Tai Chi forms for me. I think uh, he. I'm going to need a lot of his help to, you know, uh, 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 write up that document. So I, 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 I want to leave, uh, I want to leave the, the Federation with a, a document that will help guide Kung mm -hmm. Fu teacher to 
how can we how can we take existing forms and adapt them for specific disabilities mm -hmm. it's it's really amazing it's really amazing and uh, i i use the to teach the people who is uh, like the sight disability who couldn't see very well mm -hmm. and who are on the wheelchair too both in China and uh, overseas. <clears throat> I just shared the finished the sharing actually last year when I was in Germany for uh, elder community, you know, who most of them they are on the wheelchair. That I believe this is very important work. So when I came back um, and I was uh, wondered, as you said, I, I believe that your the the president of Kung Fu Federation in Brazil is doing very important and very uh, like uh, how can I say helpful job for many people and especially and uh, you are working in you know down to earth, a way of down to earth to, to give people like a suggestion or write the documents to share your uh, your opinions based on your experience for years. It's very important. So for me, even I teach a lot of uh, the, the people who with uh, disability, but uh, I couldn't, for some part, I couldn't, uh, you know, clearly understand. So I believe that uh, I have a lot uh, to learn from you. And uh, I hope you, <laughs> and uh, later we can share more and in more specific way. For example, like uh, how you move with the sword or with the bare mm -hmm. hand for the Tai Chi form. And mm -hmm. uh, which form, for example, is uh, helping you a lot for healing your 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 neck, for example, mm -hmm. so many people are working with a computer. You know, they have many of them. They have problem of the neck. So, which form can be the most helpful? And also for the shoulder, for for uh, for for the arms, for the arms and um, the the waist. You know, also how 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 to heal if, as you mentioned that. Uh, uh, tai Chi is a sort of um, physical therapy, right? And mm -hmm. all, I believe yeah. it's other style of martial arts, like uh, you mentioned, the uh, uh, Chai Li Fort uh, or maybe Karate or the other, you know, style that, that can be uh, benefit, uh, can heal the body as well. Yeah. So, and also when our body is healed, our mind will be delighted will be, you know, in joy for, in joy. So it uh, we are like yin and yang, like the harmony. So we are really feel, you know, in this, uh, today I wrote a little thing like, uh, uh, amazingly ordinary, in this amazingly ordinary world. So, so and um, thank you so much for sharing your experience based on uh, your, you know, your own way of practicing and your observation for the others and the great work you have done and you are working on. And I'm looking forward to. Uh, talk and share with you more to learn from you more about the more detailed and more specific uh, uh, techniques and uh, a sort of a specific way of thinking to help and uh, to work with together as oneness for no matter people with disability or, or, or without, you know, so this is, I, I believe, like um, we are really can do something for, for firstly for for us, for you and me, and later for our friends and the classmates, and then 
has a value for the society to do a little bit of contribution based on our own way. Right. Yeah, uh, I agree. And <laughs> thank you very much for for uh, for this. This has been very motivating. You know, I I I I've I've been very happy to to be able to share this experience. So thank you for that. Okay. So uh, I'm looking forward to see the next uh, um, talk and in more detail. And, and I believe that uh, will will help us a lot to understand more detail, more clearly. Because you know, in China, we said the best way of learning is teaching. That that is one hundred percent true. I <laughs> I agree one hundred percent with that. Yeah, and uh, we possibly we are you know together with all the others who would like to search more in this uh, specific way of life or the kung fu or whatever we name it. And uh, yeah, let's grow up together. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Daniel, again, and uh, thank you for your time, your experience, your wisdom, and uh, your own way of thinking, independent uh, spirit. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, Lee. All right. Okay. See, you, see next you next time. time. Okay. Salute. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye.